Yeah, but if you did substitute teaching for five days a week, you'd be making as much as a medical doctor. No, I would not. Hey Siri, what's $190 times five? It's $950. That's $950 a week. <laughs> yeah, those doctors, they're not making much. Hey Siri, what's 950 times 52? It's 49,400. Oh, why did I think that was so much money? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, hi. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> we are the Uncensored Moms Podcast. My name's Michelle. My name is Vicky. I just feel like your microphone's very quiet. It's very quiet. So is that keep better? Keep it close to I'm your gonna mouth. I'm going to keep it really close to my mouth. Keep it close <sighs> like there's a penis about to enter. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> When's the last time you had a penis in your mouth? Mm. I was it's, just thinking about this this morning. I you were just thinking yeah. about it this morning? Like, when was the last time I did that? I think that if you have to think that you long, should, it's been too long. I'm sorry, Hank. I guess it's time. I guess it's time. What about you? Um, Within a week. Oh, wow. That's amazing. What's uh, this past weekend? Oh, nice. You know what Werner said? <laughs> <laughs> he said, thank you. He said... When you give me a blowjob, it's like cuddling to you. Like, I feel so close to you. Aww. And it's like the equivalent of when you love me just sitting down and talking to you and cuddling with you. I feel the same after a blowjob. And I was like, huh. He's such a good salesman. Interesting. <laughs> He's like, it, it, it's really the only way I, I feel I love. Like, well, way to guilt me into and, those. And, um, you know, you get hugs all the time, and I just I just feel left out. And I was like, what happened in your childhood that blowjobs bring that closeness to you? Well, I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Keep giving me blowjobs and maybe it'll <laughs> emerge. Um, Brian's never said that, ever. <laughs> and um, actually, when I first met him, um, I was, you know, giving him a blowjob, and he was like, not looking at me oh. and I was like um you should be watching me because this is the good part <laughs> and he's like and he's like oh I just feel like it's like disrespectful like to like like stare at you like that and I was like no no that's mm -hmm. part of yeah like he had like internalized that huh. like it was um degrading like too porno yeah like too much like like this is degrading I'm, I'm sure you don't enjoy it um interesting and i was like no 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 like we're in a relationship this is part of like we like i am i am we are consenting we're both consenting <laughs> um and this should be fun and it should be enjoyable and so i think that's something we've been working on for basically yes. our entire relationship yeah okay do it tonight see if he looks you in your eyes <laughs> i'll report back <laughs> next week first like can i can i I'll, Get I'll in on that experiment too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Michelle, I will stare at you the entire time. <laughs> he stares a little too much. It's like, okay. This is so and then sometimes he'll like, and I'm like, am I doing this or are you? Okay? Like, let me do I it. I like, need a backseat yeah, driver. So, or... exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so different. Brian's like totally hands off. Like, he's just like, like I'm sh I, I don't know what he's thinking in his head, but I'm going to ask him because I imagine him thinking like, Wow, thank you so much. This is really nice. Thank you so wow. much. This is, this is such a nice thing that you're doing. I don't have to do it anymore. I promise. Like, you could, you know, I just wow. feel like that would be. I had a boyfriend. Tale. I had a boyfriend when I was 16 who would not allow me to go down on him. Was this a church boyfriend? It was a church boyfriend. Ah. And it's possible he's even listening to this. So, Hi. who knows? But he, I tried to go down on him one time and he, like, allowed it for like a second and then he was like no 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 and I don't know if it was a religious thing or um I'm assuming it was I mean but he felt guilty yeah he felt guilty I'm sure yeah he felt like well and also I feel guilty you're 16 like is that a thing 16 year olds do probably I mean probably I don't remember yeah I don't think I was doing that at 16 but maybe I was <sighs> I mean, I wasn't, but I was about to. I was trying oh, to. Oh, your first but yeah, it was time. like, oh. all right, well, we're not, I know we're not going to have sex because we both agreed we're not going to have sex until we're married, but <laughs> I am willing to put my mouth on your penis because I hear that feels good. And when you think about it, I mean, I mean, even like, especially in that age, like sex 
it sure can lead to a baby so don't do it but like also like that's pretty fucking personal to be like and i'm gonna put my head in your crotch right because i'm For a what it's christian worth, girl very hygienic that's nice like almost ocd about it so he's very clean always smelled wonderful oh he's gonna be so happy listening to this but he didn't want my mouth on his penis so i you know for the longest time i was like maybe he's gay but oh my god i mean and that's fine I if you know, I are i feel like i feel like a gay a gay dude would still enjoy a blowjob not if i'm a woman i don't Close know his eyes i don't know that goes back to our thing of like i enjoy Giving a drops. man licking my vagina, but I don't think I could just have anybody have do anybody do it. Mm. Unless I was in prison, you know this. <laughs> We've talked about it. <laughs> We've this. talked about this. Okay, one thing I was gonna say: hard right turn. We've gone off track. Um, I keep thinking about how cool it would be to write my own memoir. Mm -hmm. And when I, anytime I listen to someone's memoir, like for example, I'm listening to Matthew Perry's right now. Okay. And it astonishes me how people have such wonderful memories. Uh, how do they remember? Well, this is the thing about memoirs. It's a, a rule, like a hard, like people, this is like well-known knowledge. Memoir is just the best recollection. So you definitely are rewriting. You are oh. not telling the whole 100% exactly how it happened truth because there is no way that you could. There's no way. And also the amount of drugs and alcohol he was on. Right. How do you remember conversations? Yeah. I bet he has a person who like sits down with him and is like, okay, think about these things. Now, what if like, did you, are there any parties? Like, and they're, they're pulling these memories oh. out and then they're just, like reconstructing them the best they can. Does that mean you could potentially make up words in a conversation? Absolutely. You could. Oh, but the goal of the memoir and there is leeway there, but the goal is to stay as like the, the point is just to get like the general idea of what happened and what came out and of your that feelings. and your feelings and how that's affected you now. And so you do have like this kind of, you know, freedom to be a little, a little um, imaginative. Lucy. Okay. Yeah. I knew you would have an answer mm, because I A, know. I know that you share this problem of memory absolutely, where it's very hard to remember things. Yes. And then two, you are a writer. So I figured you would have learned something from your writing class that you could share. And thank you. That makes a lot of sense. And maybe I will go into it with that. Yeah. I don't think storytelling. And that's, right. So like I've taken memoir specific classes uh -huh. and that is, part of the process I think a lot of people go into it afraid that like well what if I what if I'm it's fiction or what if I'm making it up and it's like well you're going to have to make it you have mm. to just accept that because and you know that like you know what's a lie right like you know if okay now we're going into territory and that never happened and never would happen and nobody was there that I said was there like that's that's lying you know the difference like the the line is loose mm -hmm. but Come on, we all know when we're Okay, here's my now. second follow-up question. The other thought I have when I... Because I mostly only listen to celebrities' memoirs because I'm just curious about their lives. I'll always have a thought of like, they're really good writers. No. Are they having help? Absolutely. Are you sure? Because sometimes they say, as I'm sitting here, I'm looking out my window at the, you know, the Pacific Ocean. So I'm picturing them at their desk by themselves on their laptop writing. And then I'm like, wow, he's a really good writer. I'm not saying that that never happens and you know they are creative people and I feel like creative people tend to be good storytellers mm. so it's possible but I would say no I would say they absolutely are having help and they are not just sitting there writing it all down writing a hundred thousand words all like, on their here's own here's my manuscript no and I bet it's like a collection of journals I bet it's a collection of like conversations with other people who were there it's a it's a collection Okay. Which is fine. Okay. Well, you know. you know, that eases, that takes the pressure off of, you. it makes me feel like, okay, then I could maybe try and do something like that. You absolutely could and should, as mm -hmm. will I. Maybe I need to live a little more life, but I feel like I have a decent amount of stories to tell. You could do, um, a lot of times, like if people write memoirs earlier in life, um, it can be kind of like focused on one lesson maybe that you've mm. had right so like if you wanted to write about um you know your christian upbringing and how 
that's affected you, right? That could be like the focus. And I think you've learned, you know, you've changed enough where that's like a reflective mm -hmm. focus. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to write like, my life <laughs> as, you know, Michelle. Like that would be I have lived silly. many decades and I know all the answers. 30 in life. fact. Right, yeah, no, that would be... I mean, okay. sure. I, the thing is, too, is that you can create anything you want to create. And if people are interested enough and they, they buy it and they, they want to talk about it and hear about it, mm -hmm. then it's a worthy pursuit. No, one's, no one can tell you what you should be creating or why. Yeah. You get to decide that. Thank you. Thank okay. you for that. Okay. We have a really exciting episode for you where we're actually going to try and keep it to one topic. It's already impossible because we've already <laughs> talked about blowjobs and memoirs. But we do want to talk about our travel experience because Vicky and I have both had pretty unique situations. I mean, not unique to everyone in the world. Many of people have done this. But we've had listeners, you guys, ask about our travel experience. Vicky sold everything and traveled in an RV across the country for an entire year. Werner and I also sold everything at one point and traveled internationally for about six months. So we felt like it might be cool to do like a comparison and contrast of leading up to that decision, what it was like making those decisions on the road and, and how we decided to come back and how it's impacted our lives. Before we get to that, I think we should talk about the, the one more topic. We have some listener feedback. Feedback. Well, one thing was... Um, <clears throat> Today, while listening, I'm wondering, does your friend, my friend, Michelle. listen to this podcast, my Vegas friend? And um, she does not. But while <laughs> I was in Vegas, I was like, hey, follow our YouTube channel. And listen, all right? And follow our Instagram. She actually already followed her Instagram. Yeah. And listen. And she goes, how do I listen to your podcast? And I was like, many ways. How do I listen to At a podcast? Right? She's like, what's a podcast? <laughs> How did you even hear about podcasts? Is this a thing kids are doing these days? And I was like, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. So I walked her through the whole thing. I was showing her some YouTube videos. Um, but I think the intent of, of this listener's question was, is she going to hear what you're saying? Yeah. Maybe. And, and feel bad. Eventually. But the most important thing is anything I say on this podcast, I am more than happy to say to this person's face or I've already and said have, it. yeah. Or I've already said it. Exactly. And this particular person is such an open book that she would not care and she would agree with everything I'm saying. So. And she's the sweetest person. She really is. I mean. Which I have a story, though, of her as sweet as she is and someone being rude to her in oh. Vegas and then I said something. <laughs> Should we just talk about that Yes, real quick? I want to know. Okay, yes. and then we'll get to our yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah. So we went to a restaurant. It was like a really nice restaurant, um, a steakhouse. And um, I met Becky at the table because I was cashing Her name out. is Becky. Yeah, her name's Becky. That's the first time you've Hi. heard that. Hi, Becky. Hi, Becky. Um, and um, <clears throat> I sat down and she goes, the host was really rude to me. And I was like, what did he do? And she's like, well, I came up and I said, hi, I have a reservation for two. And he said, oh, well, our systems are all down. And she's like, okay, well, and then she like pulls up her phone and she's like, here's the reservation if that helps. And he goes... I need you to just relax. <laughs> stop the, stop and recording. Was, and I was like, he told you to relax? And she's like, yeah, he told me to relax like two or three times. Ew. And then I was like, Ugh. so I called over our server. Amazing. And I was like, excuse me, sir, is the manager here tonight? And she, he said, yeah. And I go, who's the manager? And he said, Sal. And I was like, can you please send Sal over? And I was like, it's not about you. I just want to talk to him. You're doing great. So overcome Sal, yeah. who was the host uh, that she thought was just no. the host, and not the manager. And she gives me a look like her eyes are wide. And she's like, and I was like, oh, shit, this is him. Mm. So I go, is this the guy? And <laughs> she's like, and I was like, hi. So like my tone changed sure. because I was about to be angry to the manager about someone else. And yeah. now I'm talking to that person. So I was like, um, so... My friend here told me that when she was checking in, she showed you our reservation and, and you told her to relax and um, it offended her a little bit. <laughs> and then I got real small. And he goes, oh, I was just kidding around. He's this old, larger white man, just mm -hmm. to give you a visual. 
Oh, I was just kidding around. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, well, you know, you told her to relax and she didn't really like that. It wasn't so, really funny. And he's like, I am so sorry from the bottom of my heart. Oh, and I was God. like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Just leave us alone. <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry. And then he came over like two more times to apologize and oh, gave good. us free dessert. Good. And then as we're leaving, he goes, I, again, I am so sorry. And I was like, it's fine. And then as I'm walking away, I'm like, you know, we really made an impression on him. And he's like, he'll <laughs> never tell anyone to relax again. Well done. And see. I'm impressed that even in that moment where you're like, oh, shit, it's not. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is the guy. This is happening. Um, I got to say something. Yeah, you can't really be like, never, never mind. mind. <laughs> Never mind. Actually, never mind. Um, I'm glad that you saw it through. And even when you're afraid that you were still uncensored and totally transparent about what you needed to say. Thank you. And you had your friends back. I did. It was very awkward. Who um, cares? But, you know. The awkward moments are the ones to remember. Yeah. Well Everyone done. could use some feedback, right? Like, he might not have intended anything or any harm. Maybe he was joking. Maybe she took it too seriously. Sure. I don't know. But I also think, like, it's good to present it in a calm yeah. way that, you know, like, you can do that. This reminds me, Brian was at basketball sign-up for, for August the other day, and it was a shit show. Like, it was just, like, unorganized. Mm. There was nobody in charge. There were, like, nothing matched the way it was supposed to. It was just, like, in, it was just ridiculous. And obviously he's frustrated and he's, oh, he's like trying to figure it out and people are doing the wrong thing. And so then other people don't get their jerseys like they're supposed to. And there was like two, there were like two women working back there, like totally frazzled. And he's like, can I help you? Like, like, is there something I can do? Is there a box I can go through for you? Cause like stuff wasn't out yet. So that's his approach. Mm -hmm. And the guy next to him, another dad with the kid there is like, don't you think you could have been more prepared? I hope next year you do a better job. This is, this is, and he's just going oh. on and yelling. And it's just like presenting the way that you feel in a calm, constructive way is always preferred to that guy. Yeah. And I'm sure that there could have been like another way to tell that guy, like, um, you were a fucking dick. Like, like the... <laughs> <laughs> the, like car, the school, the school like car the guy. School thing. Yeah, but you know, like that's a good lesson because it totally worked out, and he was. He, I think he genuinely felt bad, even though I think he did. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. Is definitely um, <laughs> he's on his way to processing that. He's still processing his emotions. Yeah, yeah. Calm, cool, calm, collected will get you so much further than the angry Karens. <laughs> Speaking, Speaking of, of Karens. Sometimes Karen gets shit done. We just got to close the loop here on the gigantic post office size flagpole right across the street. It is gone. No! It's gone. The HOA did their job. The people listened. They took their flagpole down. The people have spoken. And I would just, again, like to put on the record that I was not the first person to complain about this flag. And if anything, I wasn't necessarily complaining. I was just inquiring about regulations. Mm -hmm. And then they Joy said, are you talking about this neighbor? And I was like, yes, here's a photo. <laughs> here's a photo. Here's a photo of me in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> With a, my torch <laughs> and pitchfork. And and I, I was so surprised that it happened so smoothly. It's really, really, it's a win. It's a full on win. And it's like a win for HOA. Like that is like, why live in an HOA? Oh, that's yeah, why. Because you don't have to deal with the nonsense. So, like, okay, I don't want to be a full-on Karen. No mm -hmm. one likes the Karens, mm -hmm. but I am a Connie, a little crazy Connie. Mm -hmm. When you gotta be. When you gotta be. And sometimes you gotta be. One of the things I get, one of the comments, the responses that I get and got when we were traveling and when I talk about it is, and I'm sure you got this too at the time, mm -hmm. oh, I have always wanted to do that. Like... That is like my dream. Mm -hmm. I just want to do that. And you know what? I, I, just, oh, I couldn't. I don't I think, think I could. could. Mm -hmm. I could never. We're here to tell you, and that's why we're doing this episode, that I kind of think you can. You can. You have to just decide. Yeah. And then you figure out a way. And we're going to share how we figured out a way. And what are the fears? What do you think like the fears are? Like that we could maybe, con 
you know, imagine and then, and, and I guess reflect on mm -hmm. and then address. I think number one is financial fears. Like be more specific. Like, um, I could never quit my job mm -hmm. and then just live off my savings. And then I come back to what, to nothing. And who knows how long it'll take to get a job again. How am I supposed to get an apartment again? What, how do I afford to travel? Traveling so expensive. Okay, so I have a, my answer to that is super clear cut and I feel like um, unique, but maybe not um, because I, I'm actually really curious to hear what yours is, but mm -hmm. just, I'm going to give mine really quickly because I think it's less interesting, but we sold our house um, and we live in California where real estate is definitely an investment for the most part. And we were able to, we made $200,000 on the sale of our home. Brian was at this point in his job where he was just kind of feeling stale and ready to maybe change things up. And he had been in that industry for 10 years. So we just thought, you know what? This is an opportunity to quit. I'll sell your house and we'll use that money to travel. And then we'll still have enough when we decide where to settle to like get us a rental and, you know, bide our time until we get new jobs or figure it out. I was will I hadn't worked um, since I had kids at that point and I was definitely willing to get a job, like whatever, knowing that like when we came back, it would just be like, do everything you can, do what it takes to get life started again, mm -hmm. wherever you end mm -hmm. up. Um, but that cushion, obviously that's a lot of money to just be like, okay, we have this in the bank and we can just use that and not have to worry about things. Um, Which is was, was like nice. That's very nice. And that's yeah. very, you know, like reassuring. I think, you know, for a lot of people who maybe heard that and said, well, I don't have a house with $200,000 right. of equity. So that was, me and, and that was, I mean, that was kind of the reason we did it. I was like, we, we can take this moment and use that money. And like, if we ever wanted to do it, now is the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Little did I know. <laughs> I mean, little did she know she'd come back and the entire world would shut and down. And the house would be worth. And then the housing um, would literally double. Yeah. So let's not go let's, there. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. So we'll that, there so that's the later. easy. I mean, that was just like, it was, it wasn't like I, you know, had to do anything really remarkable. Yeah. Though I do, I do think selling your house that you. She sold her house and she sold like 95% of her the belongings. Um, okay. So that's, you know, okay, a unique so our, scenario, you know, whatever. Werner and I were just dating at the time. We were living downtown San Diego. We were both renting apartments. Mm -hmm. um, so really, the only big ticket items to sell was my... I had a BMW at the time, and he had a Nissan Sentra. So we sold our cars. I think I got like 20 grand for my car. Um, and then we sold as everything that we could, like beds, furniture um dvds i remember you were selling like your purses my purses yeah i was crying when i was selling I my purse. it was very <laughs> cleansing um everything we could and i think we only saved up i want to say like thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars when we left did you um was six months like your goal or did it just kind of like like was that like uh, for six months thirty thousand like that should be good we didn't have a timeline okay. goal. We mapped out the first three months. So we like booked the first three months of places and flights. And then we said, we'll see what happens after three months. And then we ended up extending to six months. Um, and when we came back, we had $7,000. Okay. So you came back with 7,000. Were you, um, so the job thing is what people are afraid of. So you quit your jobs that neither of you were particularly invested in, mm -hmm. I'm guessing? Yeah, Werner's, <clears throat> Werner's job actually was remote. So he kind of kept the job going. He worked with this photographer, um, like marketing wise. And so he was able to kind of keep that going for a few months into travel and supplement a little bit of income. And then I was, I quit my job completely, but I was able to do some side things for my dad, like editing and I can't remember what else I was doing, but I was a little bit of income from him too. As we were traveling. Yeah. So would you say that was like significant? Like what do you mean? It wasn't significant like, when we only la like ended up with $7,000 left, you know? Yeah. But I mean, you're also spending money as you're traveling too. Yeah. And we had have like a very strict budget. We tried to keep it to $100 or less a day. A day. A including, day. including staying. Like, Not including staying. Okay. But the places that we've tried to find were like really cheap Airbnbs mm -hmm. or we didn't go as far as a hostel. 
but a couple were very close to a <laughs> Um, I would just, and then, so then, so that's, you left that. And then when you came back, mm -hmm. was it scary? Like you had $7,000. So that's, and you're moving to San Francisco. Yeah. So, so we had, we had agreed that, um, his sister let us stay with her in San Francisco for 30 days. Okay. So we had one month to figure out job situations and an apartment that we could somehow afford in San Francisco. So I, um, just used my like fashion degree and you know my resume and there's like a six month gap but I was like I can just explain that we went traveling like who's gonna fault you for wanting to go travel and see the world right right so I I got a job fairly quickly um at like Pottery Barn as a contractor and then Werner oh Werner started training mm -hmm. um I, I will say that about the resume thing, um, it comes up a lot um, because when Brian came back, he had, you know, applied to a few jobs. He actually reached out to people in his industry and, and um, had some good contacts. So that actually wasn't too bad, but he did have to go through the whole application process. And every single time that that comes up, that someone sees that on the resume, I mean, it never fails. People are like, you did that. Yeah. I mean, the whole conversation changes from like job experience to like, oh my God, like, tell me yeah. about that. Like everyone's excited about that. Yeah. People are not looking at it like, oh, that was a bad call. Right. Exactly. They're like, that's amazing. I want to do it. Tell me how you did it. Yes. Tell me what you saw. What was your favorite place? Yes. So it's, it's really, it feels like it's a step backwards, but it, it really is like this new, um, appreciation and you see this candidate as like a little more well-rounded yeah. and like culture you know learned new cultures or it's just this, took a risk took a risk yes is willing to take a risk yes so don't let that scare you as far as like what's my resume gonna look like when I get back and also I would just point out that like you never know what the future is gonna look like you never know if you're going to die tomorrow or if you're gonna get laid off tomorrow or if your house is going to catch on fire tomorrow. Like you just don't know what the future looks like. And so if it, is, and I know that like traveling the country or the world is not what everybody wants to do, but if it is something that you are like, just like thinking about and, mm -hmm. and, you know, just focusing on, I just think, why not do it? So what let's, that's a good segue to this next question of like, what was your life like leading up to this decision and how long did it take you to, to, decide okay this is what we're gonna do for me it was probably quicker than it should have been um I think if I look back I think it was River had just started kindergarten and so we're coming out of this phase of our lives where it's just like me and the kids like we can do whatever we want it's very calm there's no obligations there's nothing that I need to do and then you start school and it changes your whole world, right? You're, every single day of the week, you're doing drop off, you're doing pickup, you have, you know, it just changes everything so much that I think it scared. I think I hated it. I think I hated it. I you know did. I, hated I remember it. that. And it was I, a big like <laughs> shock to your system of like, what the fuck are we doing? And that like we're doing this every, every day, day forever. Ugh. It was it was horrible. That's and, how I feel today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's a it's yeah so. I think that is what kind of like got like my bones twisted and mm -hmm. I was like and I knew that Brian was kind of being like oh, my job's kind of I'm kind of like I've reached where I want to be and I'm just like eh. and so I I don't know if I saw a movie about it if I read something about it but it was just like what if and I knew that our house had risen in value so I kind of had like these three reasons that like now might be a good time. And because the kids were young, I knew they didn't have like sports commitments, yeah. friends that they would miss necessarily. Right. And, um, also longer term, we had kind of always wanted to see if there was anywhere else we wanted to live. Like I, and me personally, never having lived outside of California, I wanted to see more of the country. I wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. And so, I sig I literally, I mean, I, I actually feel like it was after a night of recording and I said to him, and you might've even been there when I first brought it up, but like, I was like, I think we should sell our house, buy an RV and just like travel the country for a year. I think that's what we should do. And he was like, I'm down. And like, that's what, and I called my realtor and that's, I mean, it just happened. And in retrospect, do I wish I had thought about it a little more? 
I think only because of the market now and like what the re reality now. But, but you wouldn't have known. I that wouldn't have time. known that. You could have thought all the live long day and never could have fathomed what would have happened with the housing market in COVID. Never, mm -hmm. never. And at the time, I was I felt so happy even throughout the whole selling process, throughout the whole um, selling my stuff process, that getting. I mean, everything was just so exciting yeah. and and happy and grateful. Like never once did I feel nervous or scared about it. I felt the same when we were in the selling um, selling process. It was so exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think because when you are stuck in this rut every day of like, I don't really like what I'm doing. I'm not really excited about what I'm doing. I don't know what I want to even do. And then all of a sudden you make this decision to do something really exciting and fulfilling. You have this newfound purpose. Mm -hmm. So everything you need to do to prepare for this new chapter is like so exciting one step closer to this this possibility of fulfillment yeah that's coming it's invigorating yeah so Werner and I I mean we felt kind of the same way of just we had taken a trip to Korea for my brother's wedding oh that's right and we had only been dating for maybe like six months at the time and <clears throat> he was in very much in his phase of like non-commitment couldn't talk about marriage it would like freak him out <laughs> Um, and I was just like, Hey, do you want to go to Korea for my brother's wedding? Like just it's for fun. It's going to be in May. It was December when I asked it's a him. new place to see. Yeah. I was like new place to see, like, why not? And he was just like, we could have a ton of sex and yeah. jobs in Korea. And he was just kind of like, okay. And I was like, look, if things don't work out, cause it was four months, five months away, things don't work out, whatever. You can get a refund on your ticket. Not a big deal. And he's like, all right. Yeah, let's do it. So we went. This was May. We just went. Just really quickly. It mm -hmm. makes me think that, like, it, it also just what makes me think, like, like, maybe it's a certain personality, too. Because, like, not, I don't know that every dude would have, who is not into committing, who's, like, that's, like, not happening, would go, hmm, yeah, all right. I don't know. Maybe it takes a certain personality, too. I'm just throwing that out there. That's true. Like that's guys. true. So we went to Korea in May, and when we got back, I remember one night, we had, were super jet lagged. And so we drove to La Jolla, that like Mount Soledad thing to watch the sunrise because we were up at like two in the morning. Yeah. And we were just talking like about what an amazing week we had in Korea and seeing a new country and like realizing we could travel really well together. We could just wander around the city together and like just had an amazing time. And we're like, I want to do that more. And he's like, I do too. And I was like, I just don't know what I'm doing with my life. Like, I feel like I have no direction. I'm not loving my job. And he's like, I feel the same way too. And I was like, why don't we just sell everything and like make it happen? And then he's like, yeah. And I was like, let's just take the next six months to sell and save up as much as possible. And so that was May and we left in November. That's awesome. May it was November. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I decided in September. I, I said that same kind of sentence in September and we left in uh, December. Yeah. I think we would have left sooner if our leases, you know, we had to tell our roommates, like, we will stick it out for the lease. Our leases just happened to be ending at the same time. Um, and we wanted to give them a little heads up. That, yeah. Like, yeah. That's we're fair. moving out. Um, yeah. Like if our house hadn't sold, I mean, our house sold right away. It if it hadn't, and then we would have yeah. had to wait too. Yeah. So, I mean, we had similar feelings and I'm sure people listening have the same feelings of like, Ugh, I just, what am I doing? Right. It's like you're stuck in that rut. And I think there is a little bit of, you know, danger of like, you know, getting into that, that feeling and literally never getting out of it. Yeah. I think it shows you. And then when you take that risk, or you even think about it and you start taking those steps towards making it happen, um, it starts to feel real and possible and it's it's not scary anymore. Right. It's exciting, like we said, and um and it also teaches you that you can apply that to really anything in life. Yeah. So yeah, I mean like I don't want you to feel like if you're listening and you're like, Well, I feel like I'm in a rut too. Like the answer doesn't have to be quitting your job <laughs> no. and quitting life to go travel the world for as long as you can. Yeah. Like that doesn't have to be the answer. I think like the main lesson is you have to just decide to make changes. 
Yeah. And you can make a change. And you can make a change as daunting as it seems, as stuck and comfortable as you are. You might not like a lot of things, but you're comfortable. Yeah. You have to just decide and commit. Maybe that means I'm going to get into hiking and find one new trail or mountain or whatever that's driving distance a month and like work on my stamina and long, you know, I don't know, yeah. something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a painting class and this thing that I've always wanted to try, I'm going to learn the piano. I'm going to just commit and start taking lessons and look forward to that. And that, yes, absolutely. And when you have that, that feeling of like, so I want to do something different. I want to step out of my normal day to day and I want to try something like that is a good feeling and listen to that feeling for yourself. Like mm -hmm. don't, don't immediately, you know, cause that voice immediately comes in your head where it's like, why would you do that? That's dumb. That's going to cost money. Do you, do you have the time for right. that? What you, you know, like what about your kids? Like you, you know, there's all these things that will tell you no. Yeah. Literally this morning I was talking to Werner and I was like, I kind of want to sign up for Orange Theory. And then I was like, but I know that it's so hard with the kids. I feel like at 3 p.m. on, I can't do anything for myself because the kids are here and it would involve leaving them with you. And I don't want to do that to you because I don't want you to do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> but now having this conversation out loud, it is okay to be selfish because if you have the people in your life that love you, they want to support you in your endeavors. Yeah. I guarantee if I said, "Hun, I'm going to Orange Theory two nights a week, he would say, okay, what are those nights? And we would work it out. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that is a partnership and you deserve that. And you may do it for two months and go, yeah, I fucking hated and that. And yeah. I'm never going to do that. <laughs> but again. I tried it. Right. And that's, that's mm -hmm. part of learning, right? You can't just like give up and give in to your situation and just say, well... This is life. This is my life. This mm -hmm. is who I am. And this is who I will be forever. No, no. That is your own no. mental block. I've been telling myself for over a year because I have the Peloton at home. Oh, I can never go to a gym again. Oh, I can't sign up for classes because I'll never leave my house. I'll never go to the classes. It'll be a waste of money. This is no one else is telling me. No, no. I am telling me no and believing in my thought, head. And I put a stamp on it, like decided. And now it's forever not an option. And I need to stop that train way of thinking and who says no right plenty of people go to orange theory and make it work right and also like you you go through that like that struggle and then you do it and then you change your mind or you love it whatever it is nobody else in the world maybe your partner but like even to a degree not them cares right <laughs> right like you're just like like oh I'm, I'm thinking about this oh should I should I okay I'm gonna do it oh I loved it oh I hated it whatever it is nobody fucking cares like even if you tell your husband you're like I didn't really like that class oh you didn't okay yeah. right like all right nobody cares do it for yourself exactly <laughs> traveling with your family and with your partner is not is not the same but right. same same line so okay okay another big fear I think yeah especially with a lot of people our age is that they have children Werner and I did this when we didn't have kids. And while we were traveling, we're like, we are going to do this. We're going to keep this up for the rest of our lives. I don't care if we have kids. We are going to Thailand every January for the rest of our lives <laughs> for a month. And our kids are coming with us. Have we been back to Thailand since? It has been almost 10 years. And no, we have not. <laughs> so. Let's talk about that because you picked up your life and you left with kids. I will say life gets in the way. So, you know, I don't think we could do, like, I wasn't going to do this trip forever either. Okay. Because at, really at, at one point, and this is just me, like it, uh, homeschooling at that time was fine because they were young, but like, I would never want to homeschool forever. Like I could not wait to get those kids back into mm -hmm. school where a teacher does it and I'm just like hearing little tidbits about mm -hmm. it, right? Like that's not what I want to be doing. Of course, COVID happened and then I had to do that anyway. Right. But I'm so glad that they're in school. I love it so much. So it's, you know, it's whatever works for you. But I will say that the experience of traveling for long term with children is endlessly bountiful. Mm -hmm. Like they are, they adapt so quickly. Um, if you are constantly presenting them with a positive outlook of what we're doing, um, they will follow suit. Mm -hmm. So like we would see amazing things and we would love where we were. And every time we left, they would be like, I don't want to leave. I mm -hmm. like it here. This is, I like this spot. And then I, we would say, but 
I wonder what we're going to see next. Mm -hmm. That was like our phrase. I wonder what we're going to see next. And they'd be like, oh yeah, we yeah. what's next. Mm -hmm. And then we'd get to that new place and we'd point and we, we, every time we went to a new spot, we would park our RV, we would set up and we would go for a walk around the area, wherever that, there, usually it was a park, usually it was like a, you know, whatever. And we would point out things that were awesome and new and different. And then, you know, then they would take that in, right? Mm -hmm. And we would talk about what state we're in, what city we're in. I mean, traveling as adults is fun, but traveling with children is like this super awesome opportunity to like engage them. And in turn, you're, you're enga more engaged yourself because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we just kind of go through life because we know how to do everything. And, and you kind of, we have habits and the way we yeah. like to travel, but kids like shake that up and they like stop you in your tracks. Yeah. Even in Hawaii, like if it was just me and Werner, we'd probably lay by the pool or the beach every day. Drinking. But because of them, we swam with sea turtles, all five of us in right. the ocean. Right. And, and it was exactly. And how that was like your amazing. favorite part. That was my favorite part. So you take that one incident on a vacation and you really do apply it to this entire, you know, Experience. adventure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really don't think that kids should be and 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 uh, my kids went right back into school, a new school, um, fine, you know. Kids aren't really making really, you know, friendships that matter until right. I would say like fifth, sixth, seventh grade, right? Like all of elementary school is like, that's my friend in my class, right. but that's not important really. Right. And so you are um, giving them that opportunity to understand that they are a part of the world and that it, their world is bigger than just, um, you them. know, yeah, them. Yeah. yeah. Which is an invaluable lesson. And something I yell at my kids all the time. It oh, is sure. not just you in this family. Mm -hmm. There are five of us and we have to work together. Right. Like, I will just give you a quick one. Went to go get our Christmas tree yesterday and Brian and I wanted one of those like really big like Charlie Brown Christmas trees. Yeah. And August was so against it. He <laughs> almost started crying. He was like, no, there's not enough leaves on that one. It's so empty. I can't. No. And River's like, eh. Really like it but I could probably get used to it and I was like come on Augie it's so cute and like he was not having it so mom and dad had to compromise but he also had to like we got one in the middle right mm -hmm. and I said to him exactly the same I'm not ha I this is not my first choice and it's not your first choice but it's our choice together and that's how we all ex you know feel happy sometimes yeah okay all right okay yeah that was a nice re reaction to that yeah okay all right. mm -hmm. okay Anyway, so yeah, I don't it, think kids should be right. Is it more challenging? It's going to be more expensive too to travel sure. with kids. So you have to get creative in where you're going. Like, are you going to go travel and stay at five star hotels wherever you go? No, not no. if finances is a concern. No, but there are a lot of good deals with Airbnb and VRBO, and that can accommodate a bigger family. That's going to save you a lot of money where you can grocery shop. Maybe you're not going to eat at all of the restaurants. Maybe you pick your top one or two and then grocery shop the rest of the time. I genuinely would. I mean, I thought before going on the trip that we would be eating at like, you know, oh, the, the best restaurant of this town and mm -hmm. the, the best cuisine of that state. And I'm going to tell you, we never ate out <laughs> because it was never good. And it, it is always better to eat at home. And so that I would, we may have eaten out like maybe 10, 12 times while we were on that trip, because every time we did, we'd be like, why did we do that? And it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And mm -hmm. kids are simple. They are yeah. happy with like their grilled cheese every night or whatever it is that your kid they're is gonna into They're going to like mac and cheese in America and they're going to like mac and cheese in a different country or a different state. Yeah. And... Yeah, I mean, and also what was cool is I remember when Werner and I were in France, we walked up to this little local, you know, grocery store. They had their eggs on shelves because they don't refrigerate them. Mm -hmm. And it's just a cool experience to be like, I'm grocery shopping with the locals right now. Yeah. And save a ton of money, bring it back to our little tiny kitchen and cook. Yeah, I think that's such a good point. Like doing that, going to the store, going back and cooking... Um, it is like you're living there. Like yeah. you're kind of experiencing it as a local. And eating out gets old really fast. Ugh, you so miss a home-cooked meal. 
highly recommend just going into it knowing that we are going grocery shopping and we are eating at home mm -hmm. happily. Yeah. Wherever that home is. And then save your money for experiences, mm -hmm. you know? Or like, gas. That's where we, or gas, yeah. <laughs> we would, you know, we would save as much money with where we're sleeping because we're we just need to sleep there and have a little kitchen. And we would save money on food, you know, by grocery shopping. But we would splurge a little on, like, going to the Louvre. Like, when am I ever going to get to go in there and explore that museum? Or, right. you know, renting bicycles in Florence and, and cycling around the city. So. Yeah, and you can do that with kids, too. You can do that with kids. You can do that in your drive an hour from home and rent bicycles at your nearest tourist stop. I don't know. Um, I would say another fear that I just thought of was, like, um, the fear of... Like, what are people like? In the States, you can kind of, I mean, we have our own version of, like, what are people like in other states? Like, mm -hmm. if you're, you know, listening to this podcast, you're probably pretty liberal. And so you're like, oh, what if I go into, you know, middle of nowhere and everyone's mean to me because they see my California license plate mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, my brown skin, whatever. Um, I will say on, a like, a domestic level, um everyone everywhere is actually really really nice they're just humans too. they're just humans um what about like internationally were there any um, i don't know was language an issue was you know culture an issue that's a great question um for the most part um most people knew english mm -hmm. and the ones that didn't are super friendly and super willing to try and communicate in whatever way we can and um, it just made the experience that much cooler to see like, oh, you know, you're humans too. There's humans that live, are just living their day in, day out here, just like we were at home. And it's just really cool to see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's an important lesson too, is like, we are all the same mm -hmm. in different places. Yeah, and, and just because there's a language barrier doesn't mean that they are less than than you. Right. Uh, like, right. it's just a different language. It's not a lesser language. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and if they, if you went into Thailand or wherever you were and they spoke English, you're like, oh wow, you speak two languages. That's way cooler than me. Most people spoke two, three, really four languages. Way cooler than me. No way. No. Thank you for letting me into your country. <laughs> I... I appreciate it. I'll be really nice. <laughs> Um, what's another fear that people have? I wish, you know, I probably should have asked questions before we this episode. Anybody have any questions out there? I mean, feel free to ask follow-up questions. But, yeah, oh, okay, so, so coming back, I kind of shared, like, what we did coming back to San Francisco. Um, when you guys came, I guess, how did you decide you, when was the time to come home? Um, when I was, when I was like feeling, I just felt ready, mm -hmm. you know? Same. I had the feeling. Yeah. It's like, a, like you, you, you do it as long as you can. And, but there was just a time where it was like, all right, I'm ready to have a house again. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to just relax and, and know where I'm going to be every day and know my grocery store aisles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like it's not, you know, everyone now has their limits and a year was definitely my limit. I was ready to have. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. I was ready to have a steady place. Yes. Is yeah. that how you, that's, that's how we felt like, yeah, getting up to the six month mark. We're like, we kind of feel like having a home. Where and were you at the six month mark? We ended in London, but we had decided prior to that. We're like, let's, I think we decided in Asia. We're like, we're going to do Amsterdam and then London and then let's go home. You kind of had that idea. Like that was the end mm -hmm. and it felt right. And it felt right. And we're like. You know, we don't have all the money in the world, so right. this has to end at some point also. But we just felt like, I'm ready to have a routine again. Were there any places that you thought I could live here? That you even, like, considered it at all? Thailand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We stayed for Thailand. We stayed in Thailand for a month. And we found this really affordable, like, studio-type place. Um, I think it was only like $500 for the whole month and we kind of got into a routine there because we were there for an entire 30 days. So we would like wake up, walk mm -hmm. and have breakfast or like make food there. And 
go to the beach and swim. And so it felt nice getting into this routine and everyone was so friendly and beers were only a dollar mm -hmm. and it was just so cheap. And you could just hop on a motorbike and go explore the island. And um, we were very much like, if we had like family here, this would be so cool to just live here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that ultimately what, and it's, this isn't true for everybody, but like, was like missing friends mm -hmm. and family. Mm -hmm. And um, for me specifically, like I missed California, you know, I missed. Which you never thought you would leaving. I didn't realize how different it is than other places. You know, um, the West is, it's bigger. Like, like there aren't as many trees. So maybe that's why it feels bigger, but like, it just feels bigger and the people are chill and, um, yeah, I am a Californian, that's for sure. A Southern Californian, for sure. Yeah. You realize things about yourself when you're outside of your norm and comfort zone. And, you know, I had been super materialistic prior and, you know, cried when selling a Louis Vuitton purse. <laughs> and and then living out of a tiny suitcase for six months and washing our the same clothes over and over in the bathtub. And you just... It does. It's like, like it doesn't matter, matter anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I wish everyone I know could experience what we have experienced because it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think that that's like the most important reason to do it. If you're thinking about doing it, or if you should do it, like the the lessons you learn from taking yourself out of your bubble and going into a completely new place as yourself. Mm -hmm. How do you react in those situations? What scares you? What is comfortable? What are you looking for? Like, those are all important lessons to learn about ourselves. And simplifying is the most important thing. The most important. And it all came down to just experiences. Right. Those, it wasn't that's... like, how many pairs of leggings do I have, Vicky? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's what's, you know, obviously it's been almost a decade since this experience, but I think it stayed with you. I think a lot of things have in that, you know, if you look at my closet, there's hardly anything in there. Not to say I don't want to go shopping and buy things. Like I just spent a lot of money filling this house with a lot of things. But like I try to hold hold on to that. I want to reimmerse myself back into that feeling because it's so easy to get right back into consumerism and so easy scrolling Instagram and like, Oh yeah, I want to buy that. Like it's, it's so easy. I mean, it's just right there at our fingertips, but to have that experience and, and just remember what's truly important in life is connection, just connection with humans. Mm -hmm. Um, with the, with the natural world, like yeah. for me, like nature was a yes. huge part of it. Like just every day, our, our task, of every day like the thing on our agenda was like we're gonna go for a walk today like every day mm -hmm. we went for a walk and that would take as long as it wa as we wanted it to and we would go wherever we wanted to go and like that was it yeah and so that be made nature and made those kinds of experiences like way more valuable like it tipped the scales to where like no that's what matters mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. going it's also also a version of simplifying um I think that the thing that, you know, like you have like, you know, less clothes. Um, for me, I we use the same coffee mug every, we only brought two coffee mugs, one for each of us, and that's what we use the entire trip. And so even now, like when people give me coffee mugs or like I see a cute one, I, I'm always just like, oh, that's nice, but I already have one. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't need one. I mm -hmm. have one. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 So, we have we have like or like water bottles. We have like five hundred water bottles. Yeah. Like that's you know like why do I have so many water so bottles? You literally just need like one, maybe two. What's wrong? I don't know. <laughs> what was um like? Do you have like a story of like the worst thing that happened, or like just like the shittiest day, or some thing that went wrong um, on your trip? The two, I have two instances that, I mean, one time my phone was stolen on a, you know, train or whatever, but Aww, Werner okay. and I Wait, were, I want to know more about that. Were you holding was, you it? Was it was in my purse. Like it was like a, oh. it was in Italy and I guess Italy is really known for like pickpocketers and they're like really good at it. So I was just like standing on a, you know, bus or whatever. And I think he had to have reached in my purse at some point. And, wow. Um, but the two bigger things that stand out for the whole six months is Werner and I, you know, we're still very much in our dating realm, yeah. you know, and so it was a 
big test to our relationship of like, okay, you know, they say like, if you travel with someone, you have to do this, they're going to make you or break you. And 99% of the time it was smooth sailing. We never fought about directions or whatever. Like it was just so easy going together. It was just fantastic. But there were two nights where alcohol was heavily involved. <laughs> And um, one of them was in Thailand. We went to this club with some people that we had met. And we both got really drunk. And I was dancing with another guy. And he saw that. <laughs> he did not love that. And he, like, came and just started dancing with me. Like, taking you back. I'm dancing with her. Mm -hmm. But then he continued to get more and more drunk. And then he started dancing with this other girl. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, we need to go. And he was like, oh, wait, I don't like that either. He was gonzo by then. Like he was, oh, I hate that. Duh, like not there. And I was like, we need to go. And then I was like, why are, like, why were you dancing with her? And he was like, you were dancing with that guy. And then it was like stupid, like jealousy things. Yeah. And then at one point he grabs my arms and he's like, I love you. And he's like yelling at me. But he's like, I love you. And I was like, don't you understand? I love you. I don't know. Just stop like really like. Emotional. Just emotional and a grin and like, oh my God. And then at the second time that You had out, said it at that, like you had said I love you to each other at that point. Yeah, but I just kept kept poking at him of like, why were you dancing with her? Why yeah. are you dancing with her? And he was... I was just crazy that that was like his first declaration. Oh, no, no, no. He had said I love you before. Okay. Um, but then the second time, alcohol was also involved and we were in Italy. And I asked him what his future five years from now looked like. Okay. And he, I was like, tell me your perfect day five years from now. And he's like, well, I wake up, I go for a run, I have, you know, a healthy breakfast, I did da 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 And none of that in those five years mentioned me. <laughs> and obviously, I'm, you know, I'm like fishing for like, does he see me in his future? Because we hadn't <laughs> talked about like getting married or anything. And I was like, well, who are you waking up next to in five years? And he's like, I don't know, some girl. <laughs> Some girl? <laughs> and oh, I'm like, wow, what a dummy. So <laughs> then it proceeded to me, run, him chasing me through the streets That's of Italy. It. I'm leaving. And That's amazing. I was so drunk. I was so drunk. <laughs> and then us, you know, making up, and then we wake up the next morning, and he's like, you're the one. Obviously, you're the one I'm waking up next to. I'm like, well, why didn't you just say that, stupid? I was drunk. God. And there's like this really hot Italian chick behind you. You couldn't see her. <laughs> and I thought maybe it could be her. Too. I mean, it could be her. <laughs> but he's like, I I knew, I know that I love you. I just, there's something. Yeah, he was stupid. Whatever. I mean, he was trying to be uh, practical. I, I can appreciate that. I'm like, I like, can't see the future. I know you love me. I know you want to be with me. So just like get over yourself and just like say it. Like stop making it such a big deal. Two years into our relationship, Brian tried to break up with me. And it was also a very drunken night. And he's like, I just think, I just think we need to move on. Like, I just don't think this is, I can't, you know, I'm not a relationship guy. This is not, you know, like this is the longest I've ever been in a relationship. Like, and it's just getting really serious. And like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. And I was like, um, you're scared of it and you're being a big baby right now. And then eventually it turned to him crying in the corner. <laughs> it was a very serious night, but I would be, I'm actually curious if most long-term relationships please tell us, have had a moment of, in earlier on-ish, pre-marriage, I guess, yeah. of the guy just kind of freaking out. Because, yeah, similar situation. Burner was going to come over to my house and break up with me. And I had talked to you earlier that day, and I was like, I don't know. I think he's going to, I don't know. I think he's freaking out. <laughs> and you're like, here's what you need to do. Oh, I remember this kind of. Yeah, you need to act like you don't care. You <laughs> need to be calm. You need to say, we are having fun. Who cares about the future right now? Not a big deal. Which is true. Which is true. And so it was because of Vicky that I he came over. I said those things. I was like, look, look, I don't need to know if you're in love with me or not. We are having fun. Let's just continue to have fun. And it was from that he's that like, he's oh. like, you're right. I mean, this see, is you <laughs> <laughs> see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. 
<laughs> you saved our relationship. You're welcome. I'm glad. Thank you. I'm glad. Uh, that's All right. what older friends do. <laughs> Anyway, we hope this was, yeah. um, uh, I don't know, interesting, enlightening, helpful. inspiring, helpful. And I think it, I mean, it even helped me to just kind of reminisce and remember those feelings and like get over myself when I feel like I'm in a rut and do something about it. It doesn't have to be on a huge grand scale. Like Michelle said, you can find hikes close by. You can find campgrounds close by. There are small things that we can all do to shake up um, the monotony. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get into nature. Um, clearly, we have so much more we could say about our travels because we just barely skim the surface. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions, specific questions that, you know, popped up in your head as you were listening, please send them to us and we will do a whole answer your travel questions episode because yeah. we're going to tell you the truth and we have kind of the gamut of experiences here you know international we didn't even really get into like all the international we need to do a part two time. we'll do a part two let's do a part we'll commit to a part two send your questions in so that we can give you the info you need and quell the fears that you have when you say oh i could never mm -hmm. you can you could you could do it if we can do it you can do it michelle what are you loving today I'm so glad you asked. Oh my God. I recently got these puffy eyes and dark circles. Oh, don't you do this. Go <laughs> <laughs> Put the hand behind the product. I oh, yeah, this is the podcast. Um, 24 karat gold eye mask. They're like eye patches. Mm -hmm. I love these things because specifically if I've A, stayed up too late or B, drank a lot the night before and I wake up, I slap these bad boys on for 20 minutes while I'm just, you know, having my coffee, and it de-puffs real well. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So we will link them for you. And they're not expensive. And you can put them in your refrigerator to Ooh, make them even colder. Nice. You just keep the box in there? Yep, and then you just, they're individually wrapped, and then you just put them on. De-puffing, I love it. Yeah, big de-puffer. Nice. What are you loving? I am loving that our podcast, our, our, um, what's it called? Our website is back up <gasps> and live. That's oh, what I'm loving this week. www.theumcast.com. That's exactly where you can find it. And it will remind you of all the episodes that we did in the past. I mean, I was just kind of like looking through, seeing like, oh, how did I used to do this? Because it's been a while, truly. And I read the description of one of of one of the episodes, and I sent it to Michelle because I was laughing so fucking hard at this. I'm telling you, there is a treasure trove there of content that you can get to from our website. I mean, yeah, we're in our eighty something episode. Yeah, we're five years into this. You know, we had a little bit of a break, but we're seasoned. You know, we're seasoned, and our website is back. So please go visit it. Take What's also look. cool on our website is we have a link to all of the books we've been reading mm -hmm. and we have a link to all the things we've loved. Yeah. So if you forgot, oh, what was that thing that mm -hmm. they said that they're loving and I really, it sounded good, but I can't remember. I'm going to put it on the website and you can always go and find it. Yeah. And apparently you can sign up for a newsletter. Have we created a newsletter thus far? No, but we can and will. We definitely will. And I just, so I just redid the website. I just like reopened it up, you know, paid for it basically. And it like takes me to this link. And it's like, these are all of your email subscribers. And I was like, we had email subscribers. <laughs> and I looked at the list and it was like, what did I tell you? It was like 36 people who had signed yeah. up to get emails. And I'm like, hey, sorry to leave you hanging. Hey, sorry you haven't uh, received an email let from me us. get on that. Um, so yeah. It'll be like a little like new episode reminder or I like that. other things like that. I like so that. I think it's highly worth your time. Yes. We will not spam you. We will just love on you. Speaking of loving on us, can you please go and subscribe to our YouTube channel? Please do. And tell a friend or two about our podcast. Yeah. Or share it on social media. I yeah. love to see when people share shit. It's great. It makes me real happy. It's great. Thanks for tuning in, friends. We love you, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.